Wait, kids. We're gonna go together. Yeah, we're gonna go on the quad. What? Yeah, the seat is very hot. It's because it's so hot outside. The sun is making very hot. You will burn your legs. Be very careful. Hey, how do we go? No, I'm gonna get the camera in a little bit. Be careful here. It's very hot. Okay. You're gonna get the camera. You sit behind me. Hi everyone, glad you tuned in today. First off, let me just say thank you so much for um, your kind comments on the last video where I shared about our loss with the chickens. Um, it's really heartwarming to see how many of you guys care and support and have encouraging words. Today I'm just going to give you an update on our cows and um, yeah, just enjoy the vlog. <laughs> Back, back up and giving the cows water now. Oh, I the water a little bit more. Yeah, we can. We're gonna go swimming later. Later today. Later today, yes.
Let's get the other cows. You want to whistle? Yeah. And call them? Yeah. Try it. Doesn't work? Come here, come here. How do you whistle? Go, go like this. <whistles> Can you blow through your mouth? <whistles> go, S try to suck the air in. Come now! Oh, look, I see, I see them. They're coming. See who's coming there? The calves. You remember their names? Um, you can tell to the camera. Dozo and um, Little May and Little Minnie. Papa, I know a good name for you. Are you wanting to start the pump? No, we. It's it's full of water. You see? You want to take my hand the and jump down? On that side one, was a two, boy. three. Is that a boy, Papa? What? The one on that side. Was a, boy. a boy? Yeah. So here are the three calves. Um, the first one that was born was little May, then Dozer, bull calf, and then another heifer um, named Minnie. And we are expecting three more calves. But I have a suspicion that the bull that was with the other cows, that he was um, not being able to make babies. So I have my doubts that um, we will have three more calves. We can't tell yet on the cows. They are obviously big because they have so much nice grass. But we'll see. But these calves are doing really well. They're playing around. Sometimes they run under this one wire, which we're totally fine with, and they come say hello in our yard. Sometimes they've chased some chickens that um, <laughs> are out of the fence walking in our yard. And um, it's really a joy to be able to just watch them. They're super cute. Come here. Careful that you don't fall. Come. Come on. No. Yeah, the cows are still there. Look. Can you can you push the button to start it? Good job. No, 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 no. Yeah, we are we have to park now. I recently received the question you know if it's worth it to keep these cows and how much you net and all of that and um, my gross on these cows with the meat um, one of the cows that we slaughtered it was um, about 25,000 crowns and then um, obviously you have the costs for the butcher and so on but I sold the meat um, a bit too cheap. We sold it in 10 kilo boxes and 60% was ground up um, meat, ground beef and 40% was you know different um, pieces from the cow that you can use for goulash or roast or steaks or what have you. Um, the fillets are being sold separately and we charged 135 Swedish crowns um, for for that per kilo um, and I should have charged about 155 but there was a misunderstanding between me and the butcher so it ended up being a little more expensive for us but um, then that meat is vacuum packed and certified checked on all according to European Union regulations and we can sell it 
and um, the people just love it. It's incredible meat, and and the price actually gets lower because um, we have like no water come out of the meat when we cook it in our pan. When you buy meat that's like cheap in the store, not only is it unhealthy and it doesn't taste as good. Um, also, you get you pay for so much water, and and basically the ground beef cooks, it boils in the pan instead of frying, and um, so the, we have the chance since we work with this little local butcher place um, on a on a farm, um, he lets these um, cows the, the the he lets the meat hang in his walking cooler for 14 days, and then. He cuts it up for us, so the 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 meat is excellent, super super nice meat. Expecting some blueberries to come uh, this year in the forest. We're gonna have um, a lot of wild blueberries and lingonberries. They're gonna gonna come very early um, because it was so warm now um, in the spring. Today it's really warm; it's 30 degrees again. But um, yeah, our we call these American blueberries. They are coming in nicely as well. So this little calf here is Dozer, the little bull calf, and they're growing like crazy and doing really well. And this here is Biffen, he will be processed this fall. Do you guys remember when we bought these cows, these three cows and the bull that's now in our freezer? But we bought these in February or March, I believe. And um, when they came, they had spots of fur missing um, where they were had been itching and... Um, I made a video called cattle I bought possibly carrying disease because some people were concerned about that and when I had first observed these cows it looked to me like it was not ringworm but that it was you know something else and they hadn't been doing so well they were kept on silage in a dark stable um, they were being taken care of well but uh, not the way I would like to do it here and so what um, what we did was um, we just started to give them kelp and we gave them salt and hay which is better for them and we just kept them like that and um, I got a lot of criticism uh, from some people it needs to be treated it is ringworm and so on and now look at them their fur is completely whole it's not ringworm um, maybe they were mineral deficient but they completely recovered um, I had people comment when they first came how you could see the difference between my existing herd and these but um, yeah they are looking really really well and here on this cow you can really see um, how the long hair has come off and how she now just has this short summer coat which is really nice because it is uh, so warm today so sometimes people are wondering why my kids speak um, English so well and uh, you know, you have to ask the question, how Swedish is the Swedish homestead? Well, obviously we live in Sweden, and I've lived half of my life here in Sweden. I'm going to school here later when I was a little bit older, learned my job here, my education, worked here and so on. I spent um, the first half of my life in Germany growing up. My wife, she's actually American, she comes from Oregon. So we're quite international here, and you know, today, we're gonna have a soccer game and uh, you'll probably be able to find a picture of that on our Facebook or Instagram page my heart in soccer beats for Germany <laughs> um, even though we are quite Swedish in some things quite um, American in others quite German in others it's just this cultural mix here try to take the best of all cultures you have an apple nice well that's it for today guys hope you enjoyed this update I will see you soon bye bye